We believe we can evolve what you love to make it decidedly better. Yes, that fast. Did you see how instant that was? Go to Internet Explorer. Oh, nice. Gestures such as grab and pan and swipe up. Now, have you ever wanted to do more than one thing at a time when you're watching TV? Of course you have. Another amazing thing you can do on your Xbox. Dominate! Xbox, go home. 13 billionths of a second that it takes individual photons to bounce off of you. And while we weren't sure it was possible, today I'm pleased to announce Xbox One backward compatibility. Today, I'm pleased to announce an exciting expansion to the program. This is to what you would dream. Finally, you would dream where you are now. Why did I purchase a $3,000 PC to replace my Xbox Series X? The answers to these questions may shock you, or maybe it'll make perfect sense. I've been an Xbox fanboy ever since I got an Xbox 360 for Christmas back in 2006. I played the newest games and solo RPGs until 2008 when I was fortunate enough to join the peak of gaming on Xbox Live. Millions of friends all playing similar games and the amount of good quality games coming out was never ending. It was a great time to be an Xbox fan. A few years go by and Xbox decides to release the always online family home entertainment system called the Xbox One. Remember Connect? <laughs> Remember Connectimals? <laughs> Introducing the new Xbox One. Yeah! Oh, wow. We took the original... Oh, my goodness. We took the original Xbox hardware and put it in an all-new box. And like the original Xbox, it cannot play Xbox 360 titles. Also, uh, it cannot play used titles. Um, we we're getting rid of that. Being forced to buy a Kinect was messed up, but I still wanted the console due to the exclusivity of Halo. If it wasn't for Halo, I likely would have made the switch to PlayStation. I remember going to my local GameStop and the guy at the counter double verifying that I indeed wanted an Xbox One. It seemed ridiculous. The thought of purchasing one was absurd by most gamers due to the lack of focus on games. This led to a low in the Xbox One sales and performance over the next few years, but was then shortly backstabbed by the release of the Master Chief Collection for unfinished leaving me with only Dead Rising 3, Destiny, and a few other games to play since backwards compatibility wasn't fully flushed out yet for the Xbox One. The lack of content was put on display for the world to see. Xbox had lost its touch. At least, that is what it seemed. Overall, the next few years after that was full of ups and downs with releases with a few games keeping me hooked. Fallout 4 released to keep me engaged, and thankfully, Xbox still had some of the most popular games still coming to its console, along with Halo's exclusivity. Then 2019 came with a shock to the Xbox community. Our duty is to protect humanity. Whatever the cost. Halo was releasing a PC and its flagship title was no longer exclusive. Needless to say, this caused a boost in population, but also a boost in PC no-lives with supreme cheats and other altering advantages like uncapped FPS. With this in mind, Xbox players were at a disadvantage of not only the game's enjoyment, but also how fair it was. A few years passed and insane Halo mods were exclusive to only the PC. Test underscore grunt 2 and my really big pistol. Out of here. Say hello, big pistol. Mods should be on Xbox, especially with Halo. Mods needed to come to Xbox, but 343 Industries was lacking the manpower to accomplish this with the failure of Halo Infinite. Enough about Halo, let's talk about other aspects as to why I bought a PC. Xbox had recently fired four game studios, really bringing home its greed. Despite Hi-Fi Rush success, the game studio was laid off. 
This was unfortunate news, and with rumors of Xbox being called Microsoft Gaming, it appeared that Xbox had lost its touch with gamers yet again, similar to the Xbox One days. Exclusivity was being demolished all at the cost of Game Pass and giving more resources to the larger game studio. Forget startups where better original ideas originate, let's focus on Activision Blizzard and Bethesda. We also plan to release all new exclusive games from Microsoft Studios, including Forza Horizon 4, Crackdown 3, and more, into the Xbox Game Pass catalog on the same day as their global release. While these game studios do bring in a ton of money, Microsoft was also focusing heavily on the Game Pass subscription model, with most games announced at the Xbox Showcase coming to Game Pass Day 1. With subscriptions stagnating, Microsoft wanted to bring more customers into the game. The Xbox Showcase was good, don't get me wrong. I had bought my PC before the Xbox Showcase. Needless to say, I did not have much faith in Microsoft at this time. As far as my PC build was concerned, I did some research and found the Player 3 build from NZXT that would fill all of my needs as a gamer, editor, and streamer. The 470 Ti Super graphics card is perfect for my build. Additionally, PC has the advantage of sharing in the exclusivity of both Xbox and PlayStation. Helldivers is the next game I will be diving into on this PC. Sure, $3,000 was a ton to spend, but I also see it as an investment. This will increase my video processing power as well as editing potential. Streaming is now possible on YouTube, and I can now play tons of mods and games that I was never able to in the past. The PC, in a way, brings me back to the load of great gaming options that were available in 2008, except for the community aspect still lacking due to the age and party chat. So would I recommend buying a PC? I would say it depends, but overall I'm happy with my purchase. It gives me more opportunities to create content as well as opens up a whole new world of gaming. The Xbox Series X was impressive. It was being held back by dual releases with the Xbox One. Arguably what was Microsoft's biggest technical advantage in breaking into the console market is now killing them because Microsoft requires feature parity between the Series X and Series S. Tell me how this is the world's most powerful console when every game has to be designed for hardware that's weaker. While Xbox finally seems to be going away from that, it's nice to know that a PC is easily upgradable for when the games become insanely high tech. Xbox Series X is a great bang for your buck, but still lacks important features that a PC offers. After 18 years of Xbox, I finally made the switch to PC, and I don't regret it.